My name is Carlo Rindi, I'm an Egyptologist and today I'm at the Australian Museum in Sydney to have a look at their amazing cartoonage collection. The main highlight of the collection are these four pieces. Many of these objects are not well documented. There's not much information about them uh, other than uh, the donor or when they came. So what we're trying to do at the Australian Museum is to reconstruct the history of these uh, objects uh, via their style, their collection history, provenance research. Uh, we just did some uh, laboratory analysis, uh, radiocarbon dating, which date this mask roughly to the 3rd century BC. <laughs> so. Um, Maybe that's part of the story. It's part of the history of the object, for sure. Mm. So we need the uh, Sherlock Holmes? Yeah, it's an investigative work. Eh? <laughs> You're right. So in the later periods of Egyptian history, cartonnage, which is this material that we Egyptologists uh, uh, call this mixture of uh, linen glued together with plaster, uh, so a dramatic increase in production. Cartonnage was much easier to mold uh, and produce than wood, which was very expensive, especially in this period. So uh, it was used to manufacture these pieces uh, to cover the mummified body uh, of the deceased um, and to protect them in the afterlife. The mummy mask uh, was used to restore the capacity to see and the foot case was to help the deceased walk again and trample over the evil forces that you will find in the afterlife. One of the differences we can see is in the face. This mummy mask from Abydos has a white face, white uh, pale cream, uh, whereas the, the other one, one from the Fayum, has a gilded face. This would denote that uh, possibly the individual was wealthier and was able to afford a wealthier burial. Whereas the other colors, uh, cream, yellow, were in imitation of gilding, um, and gilding was, of course, used because it was the color of the skin of the gods. Uh, we must remember that these, uh, especially the faces of this mummy mask, are not a true representation of the deceased, but they're just idealized shape. And uh, more often than not, they were produced with, uh, with an internal uh, mold that was used to manufacture them. Um, so that's why we can identify many examples in many museums uh, in the world. My name is Heather. I'm the Manager of Collection Care and Conservation at the Australian Museum. Hi, my name is Melissa. I'm a conservator here at the Australian Museum. The masks were brought into the lab um, as part of a, a funded project for, cons for conservation and restoration. Um, we'd hoped to put them on display um, in an Egyptian gallery um, further down the line, but for us it's um, looking at an object and its composition, its materials, and starting to get familiar with that object. And so it's quite a privilege working in conservation to be able to do that. These objects presented us with a very unique opportunity to delve a little bit further into how materials are put together um, and how humans over time interact with those materials. <laughs> 